talk to you tonight about the Jewish Walk of Shame. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the classic Walk of Shame that happens on college campuses anywhere in the world. Uh, the Jewish Walk of Shame is a little different. There's two specific Jewish Walks of Shame. Most of the time they happen on Shabbos. If you're in a community where people are very, very pious, maybe they happen during the weekday. My community, it happens on Shabbos. The first walk of shame is when you walk in a shul and you can't find the sitter. It goes a little higher if you walk into an Ashkenazic shul and you're looking for a smart sitter. If you're in a Lubavitch shul and you're looking for anything but one of those Tilas Hashems, which they never have. Though, the Chabad in Albany, I will, I will praise them for this, man. It's one of the only Chabads I've ever walked into, and I found not only an art scroll sitter, but an Ashkenaz art scroll sitter. There's one. It's like the token Ashkenaz sitter, and it's like taped up with like duct tape to prevent, you know, wear and tear, because they know that people are going to fight over it, and they're going to have these like little tug of wars, and like, no, I want the Ashkenaz sitter. No, I want it. You know, I don't want to use one of these Tilas Hashems, and then the art scrolls get worn down, and then, you know, it's a big... You know, a big woot or whatever, a hoot. I don't know what you want to call it. Once in a while, they got one of those Shiloh sitters, like, tucked in the back, like, from someone's, like, third grade graduation. But usually, you got to stick with whatever sitters they got, and sometimes they got those those burn bombs, and got, like, the three pages you actually need missing. You know, like, chakras for Shmona Esrei in that, like, intermediate part by Keladon, which you don't know by heart. It's always missing. It's always gone. It's always, like, tucked into, like, Hallel, you know, the full Hallel or something. You can't find it. You're, like, w wandering around, and you're scared. Maybe if you pick another sitter, it's going to be bow rare. I've heard this whole, like, discrepancy of, you know, if you pass over the bad sitter and you only take the good one, it's the same thing as having a slotted spoon in your coleslaw. You're taking the good from the bad. I don't know. Maybe you guys can debate that in the comments. So basically, you walk in a shul, you can't find your sitter, and you're kind of looking around. People, I feel that they do this on purpose. They put the sitters, like, all the way in somewhere public so they can, like, look at you. And everyone's like, ha ha, token cousin, he can't find the sitter. Once in a while, in a more friendly area, maybe someone will come up to you and say, hey, do you need a sitter? Here's a sitter. If you have one of these, yarmulkes on, you notice my new headgear? You have one of these, then you're in. Because someone will guaranteed walk up to you, give you a sitter, show you the place, and find you a seat. It's on the yarmulke. You got a velvet. You got some suede. Even a even a even one of those knit ones. You're screwed. You know you're gonna have to like look around. You're gonna have to like mosey around. Then you're gonna grab something. I did this once. I did this on freaking Rosh Hashanah. I grabbed the Yom Kippur moxer. No one showed me. I grabbed. I was in Denver and I grabbed the Yom Kippur moxer and I'm davening. And I'm like, wait a second. We're not supposed to do vidoy today. No. Nah. And I just sat there, and I'm like, what the heck do I do now? Like, you can't disturb your Shmona Esrei. So I'm, like, looking around. I'm wondering if I can do some, like, Davinese, like, Shmona Esrei. You know Shmona Esrei lingo? Shmona Esrei lingo is not, like, new. It's, like, mm, 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 mm. you're, like, talking with your teeth clenched, and you're kind of got this, like, constipated look on your face. And you're like, I need a sitter with the page. Oh, yes, Mahmoud on it immediately. And you can't find it, and no one understands what you're saying. They're like, dude, like, are you down, Shmona Esrei? Cause, and I'm like, doesn't have the page in there, and I can't do anything. So sometimes I try and, like, you know, like, fill in. But, you know, Shabbos is the worst. When you're missing the page on the Shabbos, you can't figure out. Like, like this Shabbos, we didn't have a sitter on Friday night. We're like, is it Yismach Moshe? Or, like, by a Hulu? Or, like, is it like that, like... Uh, you know, I don't know, there's like a whole bunch of them, you know, and you're like trying to like weed them out. They all sound the same. They all end with Kadesh Shabbos, and you're like, uh, what do we do here? Lonisato, you know that one. You're like mixing them all up, you know, you never know what's fine. So anyway, the sitter thing's a problem. The seat thing kind of like molds into the sitter thing, because usually when you can't find a sitter, you can't find a seat either. And no one gets up to show you, hey, have a seat. I've even sat in people's seats where they've been like, that's my Makon Kavua. That's right. Get up. Yeah. Or they'll just stand there. You know those people that stand uncomfortably close to you? You're standing and you're like, why is he standing? You're sitting. And they're like standing on top of you, kind of like diagonal, because they're standers in front of you. You could say something. I, I understand the hint and the meanness of what you're trying to do, but you could have said like, excuse me, that's my Makon Kavua. Thank you. Oh, Oh, you didn't notice the big name? No, that's okay. No worries. Sit down. It's not like, let me put my armpit over your head and try and diagonally daven over you so I make you feel uncomfortable and you decide, hmm, I wonder if he's trying to send me a sign here. 
the other walk of shame, which is kind of related, but not really, because sitter people, I mean, you, you, no matter what time of shul you come, you're going to not be able to find a sitter, fine. The other walk of shame, and this this is much more pro, like prevalent in, in ultra-Orthodox neighborhoods, is when you wake up late for shul. And waking up late for shul in like a Litvisha or Yekisha place is like waking up 20 minutes late and they're done. You know, they dominate at 830 and they end at 10 and everyone's done at lunch by 11 and they're Shabbos schluffing and they have one of those like middle of the day minchas. Yeah. I once I went to this Lubavitch shul and they were making fun of my cousins how they're like, yeah, 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 when you're done with your lunch at 11 o'clock, you can come over here and you can get chakras. So same kind of thing. So one time it's at my cousin's house and, uh, me and my brother woke up uh, like 20 minutes late, and we're sitting there eating some like some apple cake or something. She's like, "No, no, uh, what are the uh, what are the fathers gonna say? The daughters they want to hook you up with the daughters. What are the fathers gonna say when you come into shul 20 minutes late? How can you do this? Nobody does this in this neighborhood. That's not the walk of shame. That's the like cousin ragging on you how you're not gonna find a shidduch because you didn't make it for Baruchu, man. No, that's not what's gonna happen." What happens is, it's not 20 minutes late is not really, you wake up an hour late for shul. You wake up, shul's supposed to start at 8.30, and you get there, you get up at like 9.30. You're walking to shul, you're like, well, I'm the only guy. Well, it's a lot of strollers. You gotta like weed out, you gotta like step off the sidewalk to go around like this caravan, you know, like like they're like Okies, like traveling through like the dust bowl with all their strollers and all their stuff piled on top of the strollers. Either to shield the kids for, from sun or snow or just all the junk. You know, there's always junk on top of the strollers. You know, the sitter and this and that and the food and all the little snacks and the Ziploc, the animal crackers. They love animal crackers. Anyway, you're walking along and uh, all the women are like looking at you like, he's not coming from a shkuma. This guy just got up. That's right. And they're mumbling like, oh, you're never going to get a shit off this kid. Nope, nope, nope. Getting late for sure. He ain't getting no shit off. Man, he's going to get bomb of the... He's going to have to go out with a working girl. They don't really have learning girls. He's going to have to go out a little, like, with an older girl. She's going to be over 20. Maybe with facial hair. Yeah, that's right. So you're walking a shul and uh, everyone's looking. And they're mumbling. It's all good. But it's embarrassing because they know you're not, you know, you're not on time. Then when you walk in a shul, it's even worse because sometimes there aren't any uh, even sitters left. And you have to pick up one of those, you know, those free breast love sitters that have like all the stretched out haze. I don't know why they do this. Like they can't just like put a period. No, they have to have like the whole column equal. So they have these haze that are like this big. Or the ches, you know, the ches with this huge, like, ches, and everything, like, stretched out. I'm like, well, it's not the Torah, it's a freaking sitter, man. And a free sitter, for that matter. Oh, since it's free, they're trying to utilize space, maybe. And act like you got something for your dollar. You know, you give those guys a dollar, and they, they're like, dude, I will give you five bucks. I'll give you a dollar. But I'll give you five bucks if you don't give me anything. They're like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, I don't give you nothing, right? You give them five bucks, you turn around, you got a stack of books on your table. You're sitting in the pizza store. You're like, what am I going to do with this stuff? Make money fast. Learn how to find your basher. You know, you're sitting there on a date, and they give you this, like, guide to getting married. And you're like, oh, it's a shkaka process. We must be for each other. You know, and you always got the free sitter. The only good thing I really got from them once, I got a Kitzer Lakute Moran, which I can't even read or understand, but it's one of those things that nice. it's nice to have on a shelf. You know, like some Sfarim are great, because Sfarim are very stately looking. You have, a, you have like a wall full of English books. It's just like, it's so like, you know, disenchanting. But you have like some Sfarim up. It's very classy. You walk in, you're like, wow. You expect there to be like a, a globe. You know, like an old school globe before the continents separated. One of those little like green lamps with the little pull strings. And like a big hardwood desk with a guy sitting behind it with a bow tie smoking a cigar. Talking about, uh, you know, ancient you know, mythology. That's what you expect. And then there's Sperm in the background, and you realize he's probably talking about Gamara. Yeah, Gamaras look good, too. I, I see how the art scrolls are going. You know, back in the day, Gamaras used to be, like, totally, like, you pick it up, and it just, like, this poof of dust falls out and everything. You know, so I'm getting off tangent here. I'm going to stop the video before I, you know, go a little nuts.